Good afternoon, my people. What is going on? It is your main man, Charles Tank Harris, the founder and chief visionary officer of the financial literacy platform, Wealth Our Way, where our motto is, wealth is not only for the wealthy. I welcome each and every one of you cats to episode 180, three tips for improving how you spend your time. That's probably not how I wrote the title out, but the little dots are up there and I can't see what I wrote. So that's what we're going with. Three tips for improving the usage of your time. Before we get into all of that, y'all know I got to practice the attitude of gratitude and say thank you, thank you, thank you to each and every one of you who are here with us as I stream live across the Wealth Our Way Facebook page and the Wealth Our Way Network YouTube page. If you have not subscribed to the Wealth Our Way YouTube page, Please go ahead right now. Wealth Our Way Network. Tell a friend. Bring a friend. Do your thing. Help us grow. Also, I want to give the Wild Nation salute to the many members of Wild Nation who will watch this program pre-recorded. They'll watch it overnight, over the weekend, wherever they can squeeze 15 minutes of financial literacy in. And then last but not least, a heartfelt how are you to the good folks on the Life 101 platform who listen to the audio content of this very here program. Hey, I got to start by saying, I made a big mistake on Tuesday. Now, you know, I'm always a man who, who lives in his truth and will always admit when I make a mistake, I forgot to salute and shout out my sister, Tasha Wana, for her birthday on Tuesday. Tasha Wana has not only been one of my dearest friends since my days at Temple University. When I started this platform, she was the first person to come on board listening and support and unless she's not feeling well or otherwise occupied, she is here every day. Just much love to Tasha Wan. I hope you had an amazing, amazing birthday. And in your honor, I went and saw the Woman King on your birthday. I thought it was the bomb. But now let's talk about today and let's talk about these three tips for improving the usage of your time. Because on Tuesday, I gave you three tips to have a level of higher living in your life. And what I did after I had that program, I thought about it. And, you know, one, one of the things I'm always trying to do is to really give actionable plans, tips, and items here on the program. I don't want to just throw something out there just because I'm trying to fill 15 minutes and not follow up with what you can really do to make that happen. So when I thought about the three tips I gave, which, which centered around your vocation, I don't use job because maybe you're a business owner, but what you do to make a living how you spend your time and your social circle. These were the three areas that I brought up on Tuesday that we need to improve to have a higher level of life. Well, to, what I'm going to do over the next three episodes is go into each of those three items. And today we're gonna to start with time. So I'm gonna talk about how you can improve how you use your time to make a better life. Because as it has always been said, and I do agree with it, no matter how focused on wealth and money and assets I may be, I do agree that time is the most valuable asset. In fact, I would succumb to the, to the theory that you can get more money. You can't get more time. You know, you can find ways to better use your time and feel like you're getting more time, but you're still 24 finite hours in a day. So with that being said, let's talk about better ways to use our time and improve the quality of our life. Because a lot of things that we're seeking to do to improve the quality of our life, when they're too difficult to do, when they're too overwhelming from the minute we think about them, we know out the gate, we're not going to implement them. They're just overwhelming. They're not gonna make us happy to try. We know we're gonna fail before we start. I'm gonna give you three very small tweaks that you can make that anybody can do that I promise you, if you do them and do them over time, you will have a higher vibration in your life. Tip one, limit television. I don't have a TV in my crib. Um, it's funny to me because you guys know the young prince, my son, spends two weeks with me and then two weeks with his mom, two weeks with me, two weeks with his mom. When he first came over here and saw that there was no television, I, I think he wanted to break the deal. I think he just wanted to go back to his mom's permanently. He eventually got the courage to ask me if he could bring his TV with him 
when he comes over and he does do that now. Now I will say, and I'm very happy to say this because I, I just not a fan of filling your mind with, with TV. He doesn't really watch television on his TV. He needs his TV to play his gaming system. So he plays Madden and the other games that he plays, but he didn't have a TV to do that. So he asked for his TV. The amount of money that I've saved from cable and streaming services by not watching TV aside, the number one reason that I don't watch TV is that the content of what you see, whereas we have some great content being produced, one of my clients, wild client Carl Seaton produces great content, Bel Air, Chicago PD, shout out to Carl Seaton. The content is not in line with how I want to live my life in a lot of instances. The things that I did gravitate when I watched TV were things that taught me how to make more money, how to be a better business person, the things that were important to me. I don't find a lot of content on TV that's in those genres. TV is designed to be entertaining. So I still like to be entertained. I'm no monk. You know, I'll go to a movie. Maybe if someone really, really harps on a series that I need to see or a program I need to see, like my good friend Martha, shout out to Martha up in Jersey. Y'all seen me shoot for Martha's crib a couple times. Martha turned me on to the Queen's Gambit. Watched that on Netflix and thought it was the bomb. Like, you know, but it, it, it reached into my intellect. Once again, if I'm going to watch TV, I want to watch TV that helps me grow as a person. Unfortunately, the majority of us turn to television as another form of drugs. The way I turn to overeating and food, the way some people turn to drinking, the way some people turn to drugs or gambling, most of us turn to television because it's socially acceptable. And in fact, people expect us to watch TV. The number of times I've had someone ask me, have you seen this program? Have you seen this program? And I have to tell them no. Or did you hear this on the news? And I have to tell them no. You have to be strong in who you are to not feel ostracized or not feel on the outside when you can't connect on these levels. But I argue that connecting on these levels brings you down as a person. It does not improve your quality of life. It lowers your quality of life. We want to stand out from the crowd. There's a saying that I took from some event that I was at and I heard that the extra mile is seldom crowded. Actually, I think they said the extra mile is never crowded. I'm not going to go with never, but I'll say seldom. It's easy to do what everybody's doing. It's difficult to do what very few are willing to do. So limit your television. Step two, well, if you're not watching TV, what are we doing with our time? Read. Open a book. If you could see behind me, if I wasn't so big in the camera, you would see that I have one, two, three, four. I have seven books on my coffee table, three books on my end table. I got five books in my uh, nightstand. I got books everywhere. I was just at Barnes & Noble last night. And I bought the, um, the 5 a.m. club, which I just listened to on Audible, thought it was amazing. And it was so amazing, I needed the physical book. So I went and bought that book last night because when I went to Barnes & Noble on Tuesday and I bought Stephen King's fairy tale, which I read with my 20-year-old daughter, Zoe. Hi, Zoe. Nah. Um, I forgot to get the 5 a.m. club, so I had to go to Barnes & Noble twice. And on the way out, I saw a couple of magazines I decided to get, Success and Forbes, because Forbes had uh, uh, the cover stories about the new industry of cannabis and how the government is messing it up right now, but that there is still hope that's going to be great. And I believe it will be great. I'm heavily involved in the cannabis space with an investment group. So I wanted to learn about this. Like these are things that we need to do. We need to read. Reading is very important to do. When I used to tutor, I used to be a tutor um, in the athletic department at the Great Temple University to you. And when I tutored, I was being, I, I had to go through a training to be able to tutor, like a real quick teaching tutorial. And I was told when you tell somebody something, they'll retain a small percentage of it. When you write it down to show it to them, they'll retain a, a, a little higher percentage, but not the majority. When you make them write it down, when they actually have to physically do something, the majority of what they consume will be remembered. Reading works the same way. I am a huge proponent of audiobooks because I spend a lot of time on the road. So I can listen to a book all the time. I don't turn the radio on. I don't know when new releases come out. I'm in the car listening to a book. However, there is something very different between listening to a book and physically seeing the pages on a page, 
the words on the page, turning the pages, and doing the action of consuming the information. Reading triggers things in our mind and our body that, that listening cannot do, watching cannot do. So I would encourage everybody to read something daily. There was a book that I read once called The One Thing. And the one thing was basically about finding the one thing that you could do in your life that if you did it, it would make all the other things that you want to do in your life easier. And one of the suggestions in that book that I've taken from it and used pretty much almost every day since is to read 10 pages of something daily. Read 10 pages. They say the average CEO reads 50 books a year. Become, do the activities of the people who you admire and want to be like. And if the higher achievers are reading, if the higher achievers limit their television, these are the actions you wish to take. And before you say, hey, this may be too hard or something that I won't enjoy, ask yourself, what are you getting out of doing it the other way? The last thing I will say, and it kind of goes right to the heart of the first two, protect your subconscious. We don't really understand how strong our subconscious mind is. And whether you have something playing subliminally in the background or playing loudly in the background, your mind is taking it in. Have you ever, this is a, a trick that I always see my mind that does to me. Have you ever tried to think about something, want to remember something you can't think of at the moment and you say it out loud? Like, who was that guy who played next to uh, Eddie Murphy and Beverly Hills Cop? Not Judge Reinhold, the other cat. And you can't think about it. You're frustrated. You let it go. And 10 hours later, you're eating spaghetti. And all of a sudden, this dude's name pops into your head. And you're like, I wouldn't even think about that right now. Your subconscious never let it go. It was still working on it. Your mind is a computer. This is why we talk about positive self-talk. Don't ask yourself, man, why do I always overeat? Why do I always trip when I come up the steps? Because when you ask your mind a question like that, your mind starts working on giving you an answer to tell you why you do it. It will affirm that this is what you do. So if you have something that you're doing that you would like not to do, ask your mind how not to do that thing. Don't say, why do I always overeat? Say, what could I do to stop overeating? Don't say, why do I always trip up the steps? Say, how could I be more careful when I take the steps to not trip? Because our subconscious is what really guides the forefront of what we think about on a daily basis. So make sure you're spending your time in ways that protects your subconscious. The number one thing that I would suggest, it's, and it goes right to replacing television, find a podcast. The way the, the social media and the internet landscape is set up right now, there is an overabundance of good information. Now, unfortunately, if there's an overabundance of good information, there is a gluttony and overabundance of bad information. Everything's not going to be simple and easy for you. You will have to do the homework to find the good from the bad. But I challenge you to find one or two podcasts that you're willing to listen to on a daily or even you know weekly basis to expand your mind. I promise you, if you take these three tips, limiting television, reading every day, and finding a podcast to listen to, to feed our mind with Things like spiritual, spirituality, financial literacy, physical fitness, relationship development, things that will open our mind to things that we never thought of before. If we do those things, we will improve. So with that being said, I want you guys to have an amazing weekend. I will see you on Tuesday. We got a great, great financial power hour next week with Nicole Purvey. Definitely be here for that. And remember, wealth is not only for the wealthy. Have a great day.